This is the program we're talking about today and I was actually originally going to talk about it in one video originally but I sort of got into writing it <laughs> and it got more and more elaborate and I said I've got to break this up into at least two videos and possibly three. So to see what it actually does is a countdown timer and if we compile and run this move it over a bit it's actually a way I could center this in code and maybe I should do that essentially the part we're talking about today is the numeric countdown which are these three uh, or numeric uh, up down I should say which are these three uh, sort of combination text box and two arrows and the group boxes which are right underneath them and the radio buttons that are on top of the group boxes and the reason you have to talk about group boxes and radio buttons together is that radio buttons are by nature mutually exclusive if you click one the other one turns off and if you click that one that one turns off but in order to determine which group are mutually uh, exclusive you need to put them in a group box if you just put them on the form it'll take the form as the container and make them all mutually exclusive and only one of these will be set at a time so basically if I click on this one it goes to one second and if I click on this one it goes to ten seconds and one minute or ten minutes or one hour or five hours and the advantage of this is it allows uh, you to go up more quickly with the numeric up down so that uh, if it's on 10 and you click up you go up 10 at a time or you go down 10 at a time and then if you click on one you go up only one at a time so you can get more precision you, you, it's a combination of speed with one and precision with the other so if I click on this I get 10 minutes and on one I get another one minute and click on this I get one hour and if you hit start what happens is this label beneath and each initially gets set with this value and then counts down one second at a time changing the seconds you notice when the seconds go to zero then the minutes go down and these end up being 59 and counting down again and so on does the same thing when the minutes each reach zero the hour will be switched to zero and the minutes will be switched to 59 but I don't think we want to wait uh, an hour and 11 minutes to see that happen so when I initially created this I dragged three numeric up downs over to the window and then I dragged three group boxes from the containers and it's important you drag the group boxes before the radio buttons because if you drag them after the radio buttons you'll actually put the group boxes on top of the radio buttons and you won't be able to access them and then within the numeric up down there's two properties we're concerned with one's increment and the other's value and within the uh, radio button the main event we're interested in is check changed and order is definitely important in the check changed as I'll demonstrate with the debugger in a minute and then as I mentioned before you have to have a group box in order to make the radio buttons mutually exclusive for that group if we look at the code behind I have a whole ton of uh, check change event handlers uh, two for minutes two for seconds and two for hours and basically what happens as I'll demonstrate with the debugger here so if I set a breakpoint to uh, um, and I set a breakpoint on the um, 10 minute check changed the it might respond in a way you're not expecting so if we uh, compile and run this and I click on the one button the first uh, check change that gets called 
is the 10 minute check change which is going from being checked to unchecked but then if we continue running it now switches to the uh, one minute check change which is going from being unchecked to check so the numeric up down minutes is being set the increment is being set to one which is what we want it gets initially set to 10 which is what we don't want and then gets set to one which is what we want I could just have one of these trapped since it'll be called every time and then have an if statement that says if this one's already checked you know set this to this you know and so on but it's more complicated code and it works this way as long as Microsoft doesn't change this you know this does somewhat uh, require you to depend on Microsoft keeping the standard the same the other uh, property of the numeric up down besides increment we want to look at is value but we're not really looking at that until we look at the timer component and the label that gets changed as time goes on which we'll look at in either the next video or the video after well I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot and don't forget to subscribe